Today on Fox Pro's Fur Takers, we cover the Rocky Mountains in search of early season predators. Mike Dillon aims to knock two states from his coyote hit list. Then, Big Al Morris brings us along for one of his greatest coyote hunts ever. That's what I'm talking about, right here in Nevada. This western predator hunt will leave you speechless. Hunting predators, it's challenging. To be successful, you have to outsmart them. In the hunt, it's fast paced and fast action. It's why we live to be fur takers. It's our first stand. We're in Montana. Waiting for it to get a little bit lighter. Just because you paint a perfect picture, it doesn't guarantee a coyote. Even though we didn't call anything on that first stand, it felt great being out there. Fox Pro's Mike Dillon is on a mission to cross a Montana coyote off his hit list. Hunting alongside fellow predator hunter Tom Austin, his odds are good. What we got over here is a big sagebrush basin that stretches for about three quarters of a mile. Tom Austin's a field staff member of ours, and he's also a guide. He's a guiding service called Predator Strike Force. Tom slays a lot of coyotes. It's October, fall is in the air. Um, the coyotes have started to disperse from their family groups. This is one of my favorite time is, times of the year to hunt. I told Mike before we got there, I'm gonna let you know this is a 100% stand, so. Let's not mess it up. Let's not make my uh, percentages go down. When I looked out over, there's a big wide open draw, and it just felt like there's got to be coyotes in this stand. We had got set up on the top of the hilltop, kind of overlooking into this draw, and there's a road that runs right up in the middle of this draw. And we're sitting there, and about 800 yards out, I spot this coyote. He's coming down the road. As it's coming up, it stopped every now and then and looked behind it as if it was looking for a second coyote. Just let him come, don't come closer, just let him come. It was almost like that coyote had read the script and he came right down the road to us. I have a, kind of a goal in mind to shoot as many coyotes in as many states as I can, and I can now chalk Montana off that list. Nice job, buddy. First Montana coyote in the bag. When you decide to build a stand, it's very essential that you look at several things. First of all, if you can't see the area, you cannot shoot what you cannot see. So it was really important for us to have some elevation in that sagebrush. Another thing that was really key major importance was we needed to have the sun at our backs and the sun lighting up the area we were going to call. You want that sunlight because you want to see that white chest coming toward you. You noticed as soon as he got into the stage, he almost disappeared. He was really hard to see. So that's why we waited until the sun was up a little bit to make this stand. There he is. 
Oh, that pale colored coyote. Beautiful Montana coyote there. That's last year's. Yeah, that's year a half. year and a half year, year and a half old coyote there. Gosh, look how furred up that is. Isn't that beautiful? Way. Nice thick coat. Um, her flanks were really full already. She was putting on, she was putting on some hair for winter. And uh, the winters up here are brutal. Try to get one in shotgun range. Sure. That's my turn. You couldn't ask for better country neither. I mean, just look at this. Oh. This country just looks coyote. Yeah. Still to come, Mike takes aim at his first Idaho coyote. The boys stumble upon a rare surprise. Come on. Then Big Al takes us to his stomping grounds. Fox Pro's Mike Dillon has teamed up with Tom Austin for an October predator hunt in the Montana mountains. The first morning gave him his first Montana coyote, but this hunt has only just begun. After you shoot that first coyote, it's just such a relief. You know, the, the, the monkey's off your back. You're just feeling really good about the rest of the day. Mike and I had anticipated the rest of the day following in similar fashion. Much to our dismay, it didn't happen that way. We hunted the rest of the day. We hunted hard. We made some incredible stands. Stands where I had scouted. I knew there were coyotes in the area, but it's like somebody had turned the switch off and we couldn't get a response to save our lives. and the scenery is just gorgeous. We're up high elevation. We've got a gorgeous sunset going on, just a gorgeous view, and then we see the giant bull moose. It was just, it just ended a great day of hunting. Even though we didn't call anything in on that stand, I'll never forget it. Day two dawned clear and crisp, it was, uh... It was nice and cold. Uh, we decided we're gonna go hit the, uh, the meadow. Places where coyotes just, they, they live, they make their daily bread. These meadows are incredible. Yellow grass meadows with high timber around them and uh, the coyotes are always, always ready for play. You know you're in a good spot when a coyote shows up and you haven't even turned the collar on yet. And that's my first Idaho coyote. So already, in two days, I've taken Montana and Idaho off my list of states. Nice. That's an older female. She's older than the one we shot yesterday. Look at that. Missing a canine. She's an old warrior, isn't she? Yeah, she's probably a four-year-old coyote. Obviously, the animals are moving, so we better go do some calling and take some more fur. Uh, sounds good to me. As we were traveling from stand to stand, I happened to catch eye of a very special creature. As soon as the badger saw us, he started to slink. He put the sneak on. He thought he was slipping out of there, but he was no match for Mike and his Ruger. That was another gimme. A badger's only. 30 yards away. 30 yards. Yeah, that's a good spot. Thank you. He's a big old boy, too. I usually see half a dozen badgers a year uh, while out and about. Sometimes they're called in, sometimes they're animals of opportunity, but it's always a great animal to, uh, to harvest. Man, look at the claws on that thing. Holy cow. Man, oh man, they could. Nasty set of teeth. Yeah, I'll see. 
I don't want to get bit by one of them. I've been close a time or two. Getting bit by yeah. one of them? I've had one or two of them charge me before when I was out bird hunting. Really? And bird shot doesn't phase them too much. They are a nuisance. They're a pest. Um, farmers hate them for several reasons. The biggest reason is because badgers live in the ground and they dig giant holes. If a cow or a horse steps in a hole that size, it's going to break it and that animal's going to have to be put down. So th we did this farmer a favor by getting rid of this badger. After Mike shot his Idaho badger, we decided to leave the area and, and go to a nice area that had everything going for it. Not only was this stand beautiful, but it was another 100 percenter. Wind's coming right this way. Yep. So we got a good wind, the sun's in our back, it should be a good stand still. He's coming straight right for us. He's down in the yellow grass now. We looked over and, and finally I got my eye on the coyote. He made a great spot on it because this coyote was really hidden in the sagebrush. He's coming right toward the call, right in front of me. Shoot him, Mike. Woo! Oh my God. How far was he? Maybe 70 yards. And I shot and I missed. I mean, it's a gimme shot like that and I missed. I just, I felt horrible about it. Hey, you know what? That's how coyote hunting is. It's... We successfully called in a coyote, but unfortunately we weren't able to get our hands on it. Not every hunt gets in with a happy ending. I'm on the border of Idaho and Montana. I'm hunting with Tom Austin, uh, Predator Strike Force. Predator Strike Force is a guide service for predators. And what I do is I essentially allow people to go on a guided video hunt and get to enjoy their experience for years to come through the film. It's the first of October. The leaves have just started to change. Temperatures are starting to drop down into freezing at night. The coyotes are starting to turn on. Your best chances to kill a coyote this time of year are gonna be first couple hours of the morning and uh, last hour or so in the evening. After two days of several dry stands, it was time to go to the honey hole. I've hunted it for years. The coyotes are thicker than fleas in there. Both of us looked at each other and said, if this stand doesn't work, it's not going to work anyway. He was coming great. He looked up, he kind of looked up. I don't know if he, if he's got our wind. I mean, the wind's kind of blowing down that way or if he caught, saw a reflection or something. Yeah, he, he must have picked up our wind at some point. You know, that was the first coyote to have a cold in with the new Eastern Cottontail. That's one of our new sounds. Oh, it's a pretty coyote. That's a big dog, dude. That is a big coyote. Yeah, it is. It's the first meal of this trip, it's too. It's a fat hog, too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. He's probably, he's probably three. He has fired up pretty good too. He's got fleas in him. Man, his fur is really nice. Finally, the sun starts to go down, the shadows get longer, the coyotes come in. I can't wait to see you pick that big dog up. I gotta, I gotta drag it all the way back to the truck. We need to go weigh him. Just by luck, I'm gonna say 38. He's gonna feel like 50 by the time I get him to the truck here. As it turns out, we went back, we weighed it. I was really shocked because, uh, you know, I've shot a lot of coyotes and this one just looked really big. It felt really big. 30 pounds? Are you sure that thing's on? It just goes to show how primed up, how furred up these Montana coyotes are.
Just like that, I love coyote hunting again. After three days, Mike Dillon has crossed two states off his coyote hit list. With Montana and Idaho now in the books, he's ready to move on. But Mike's not the only fur taker looking to score out west. Big Al Morris is roaming the Nevada desert, his favorite land to call predators. And the sun's just gonna poke over these mountains. Uh, we're gonna take you along on our first stand here in Nevada. We've got no wind, 28 degrees. And if we can't call a coyote in this morning, Wrong. You can't get them all. You gotta leave some for seed. Called in a triple, got us one. Dance them up. I'm gonna go get this coyote. Hot diggity dog. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Look at this. Beautiful. Male coyote. A big old dog. Look at that. Temperatures, everything. Everybody's been struggling. We got our buddies up in Montana and, and they've been dealing with uh, 70, 80 degree days. And when that happens, you can only hunt in the morning, but this morning it was 28 degrees. Look at that big, that's a big coyote. Big Nevada dog, let's go do it again. It's only supposed to get a high of 63, 65, so pay attention to your temperatures. And as soon as they get below that 65 degrees, 63 degrees, you can hunt all day. nature. Burned it. It's gone. Get me. 22, That's money stand and then to see it burn that was just sad but we still had that three or four hundred yard live area that hadn't burned and and that's what's critical and we were seeing rabbits. I look to the right and that coyote screams over that hill. Those birds gave him away. Those birds gave us a hint that uh, we were we were going to get some action, and, and he came hard. Look at that. Beautiful. Guess what? It's only 10 o'clock. Let's go do it again. Come on. Next week, Al Morris aims to finish what he started. It's one of the most action-packed predator hunts we've ever seen. Just how many coyotes can one man call in three days? You'll have to see it to believe it.